Ever since the creation of the world, we see that God's word is true. Nothing can stand against its power. No opposition can stifle it. Reality itself will materialize ex nihilo out of nothing to guarantee that it happens. Therefore, he can only ever be faithful to his word. Truth in 10 ish in three, two, one. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Here in the third verse of the Bible, we are introduced to the word of God. And immediately we find that it's no ordinary word. It's unlike our word. It's unlike the word of mortal human beings. I mean, notice its power. Let there be light. In mortal human terms, those words are absurd. And yet here's the difference with God's word. There was light. Uh, in John's gospel, Jesus says to God the Father, your word is truth. Uh, that's another remarkable statement. In other words, because God said a thing, that thing is true. Uh, that's the law of the cosmos. Truth, the ultimate bedrock, the foundations immovable. Reality itself is the same as God's word. They are that closely connected. God speaks. It is true. And Genesis 1 teaches us this law. Um, the universe materializes. An unthinkable phenomenon of such gigantic power and complexity that the great minds of the ages, uh, they're still puzzled by it. How did such a materialization ever happen? Why did it happen? Because of a voice. Because of a word. Uh, God said, and there was light, and there was an expanse called heaven, and there were seas, and dry land appeared, and plants, fruit trees, and vegetation sprouted on the earth, and there were signs, and seasons, and days, and years, and there was a, a sun, a moon, and innumerable stars, and the waters swarmed with living creatures, and Birds flew above the earth, across the expanse of the heavens, and livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth were brought forth, and God made man in his own image. How? Why? Because God said, because thy word is truth. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 8, there's an account of a centurion who appeals to Jesus to heal his servant. And Jesus responds by offering to come to the centurion's house. But listen to the centurion's reply. He says, Lord, just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. The centurion says, I know what it is to have some authority. But what kind of authority does he think that Jesus has? Maybe he had read Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. Jesus had authority over reality itself. Over the atoms and molecules of the cosmos. So much so that he must just say the word. If you speak, says the centurion, every atom in the cosmos must stand to attention and hear and obey because your word is truth. And thus it must come true. There's nothing else that can happen. No other possible outcome when God speaks. And the passage recounts, Jesus said, go, let it be done for you as you have believed. And the servant was healed that very moment. Um, the book of James is sometimes called the Proverbs of the New Testament. It contains so much wise advice. It's packed with pithy instructions and principles. But right at the end, in chapter 5 of the book, it seems to reach a climax. Uh, after all the wise things that have been said, uh, we suddenly come across the phrase, but above all. And you think, oh, wow. Uh, what enormous truth could this be? Above all, uh, after all that's been said, it must be super serious. And he says, but above all, do not swear, either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no, no, so that you may not come under condemnation. In other words, above all, honor your word. 
Uh, we are called to be holy as God is holy. And here's the thing about God. He is faithful to his word. It is true. And he takes our words very, very seriously. Uh, one of the most convicting sermons I ever heard when I was just a, a young boy was a sermon about our word and being faithful to our word. Um, our words are so often empty. We are so often unfaithful to them. We speak lightly. We mislead and deceive. Um, we are so unlike God in our unfaithfulness to our word. Uh, but consider this, apart from this fact, that God's word is truth and therefore it must happen. There is no hope. Our whole salvation depends on his word. And praise God, it depends on his word and not mine. And that's the only reason I can rely on it. In Genesis 1, ever since the creation of the world, we see that God's word is true. Nothing can stand against its power. No opposition can stifle it. Reality itself will materialize ex nihilo out of nothing to guarantee that it happens. Therefore, he can only ever be faithful to his word. The centurion understood just how profoundly certain this was. Perhaps the ultimate example of God's faithfulness to his word and his word being true despite impossible odds is actually found in the aftermath of the fall of mankind into sin in Genesis 3.15. There we see in a display of ultimate grace, right after Adam and Eve were unfaithful to God, he said something which would demand his faithfulness through millennia against all odds. He said that he would send a savior and that savior would crush all the work of the evil one and would create a new order of humanity who are winning the same victory. And he did it. It took a long time. It was against impossible odds. It was fought by all the mightiest forces of evil. It was tested by generations of human rebellion. But his word is faithful and true. Are you doubting? Are you wavering? Have you reached the end of yourself? Cast yourself on the word of God. Believe it. Build your life on it. Trust it. It is the only real foundation. There is um, a resurgence actually in contemporary times of what I would call respect for the scriptures. Uh, some like Dr. Jordan Peterson have even said that the scriptures are true. But what is ordinarily meant by true is that they provide good insight into truth. The Bible is a lens we can peer through to see parts of the truth or representations of the truth. Wrong. God's word is truth. It is the truth. That's the kind of power and substance and weight that it has. Nothing less.